Good evening, church. Welcome to our final week. A little late, but uh, our final week of the Book of Joy. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us and, and being a part of this experience with us. Today we're going to look very briefly at the last two chapters of the book and some of the joy practices that are yeah. in the back of the book. Um, Steph and I are both going to highlight two joy practices that are really important to us. Uh, but just so you know, there is a lot more resources in the back of the book than what we share with you today. Um, the two chapters we're going to talk about is one, the celebration of the Dalai Lama's 80th birthday mm -hmm. at the Tibetan school. Uh, and then this last chapter is just their goodbye, their final goodbye together. So um, I hope that you enjoy this time, uh, have enjoyed all these sessions with us. Uh, but enjoy this one with us too. So, okay. yeah. yeah. So the first one we'll talk about is the celebration chapter. So, yeah, in this one uh, again, um, we see that they celebrate with the Tibetan school, the yeah. Tibetan children's school, and yeah. So it's a community of students who are all Tibetan, like the Dalai Lama. Many of them have mm -hmm. experiences like the Dalai Lama of escaping Tibet um, under very dangerous circumstances. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with this, uh, you know, we, we jump in, we see uh, this school, the students there, and we learn that at this school, they receive a full education, not just of the mind, mm -hmm. but of the heart as well. For months prior to the Dalai Lama celebration, they had been learning how to find joy and happiness in the face of adversity, just as we have been learning through this book. Yeah. So very similar message. So what do you think the advantage of learning this at a young age can be compared to learning it now as an adult like we are doing? Yeah, I think that, uh, well, you know, like they talk about kids with learning languages, mm. that it's so much easier for them to learn languages if you start with them early, early, early. Definitely. In fact, I was listening to a podcast today that specifically talked about uh, development of children uh, mm -hmm. in regards to things that we're seeing in our society today okay. in, around racism. Yeah. And they said that if you, that kids at, as, as young as the age of six months yeah. can, can recognize different um, uh, ethnicities. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and they, they learn most of what they learn about race yeah. that becomes embedded in the first two years of life. Wow. So you really have to be teaching them to be respectful of all people. So I think the same is true for these kids that learning it at such a young age, yeah. it becomes more ingrained in who they are as people and then yeah. it becomes a part of themselves. Right, it becomes yeah. their character. Yeah. You know, as you're growing up, you're building your character. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, if you have these good examples and people teaching you, mm -hmm how to live joyfully, how to uh, live in a way that you're serving others and, and so you will feel joyful, then yeah, then that's going to be a part of your outlook on life yeah. and you know, yeah. you'll develop those qualities. Yeah. Um, it's always easier to to learn a habit than it is to like break relearn, a habit. Yeah, a habit. so if you live a different way, yeah. um, you know, then it's hard to break that than yeah. it is to just never, never experience that yeah. from the start. <laughs> okay. All students living here were in exile, just like the Dalai Lama, mm -hmm. and many escaped Tibet in, in similar frightening and dangerous circumstances as the Dalai Lama. Many had been sent away by their parents to escape the persecution they faced from the Chinese who denied Tibetan children the ability to learn their own language and culture. So their parents thought that that was so important that they have appropriate education, that mm -hmm. they don't have to live in fear that they sent them away. Um, you know, it was heartbreaking for the kids and the parents both, but they thought it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so many did not had not seen their families in many, many years or for even the majority of their lives. You know, they could be like seniors by this point and not see their parents since they were five. Um, for all, their greatest wish is to see their family again mm. in a free Tibet. Um, yeah, many of the students shared their stories uh, and a lot of them had a hard time fighting mm. back tears as they were telling about their experiences, mm -hmm. which uh, if you can see the video on YouTube of this. Yeah, and I'll and, link it yeah. in the video comments. Yeah, we so watched it So that way you can share. All. Yeah, um, that way you can see see this whole chapter. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, based on that, so what do you think these children's stories show us about the pillars of joy? Well, I think that it shows us that we can find joy in the midst of any circumstances. If they can find joy, yeah. 
in the struggles of their life at such a young age, mm -hmm. going through such hardship, right. then then they then they you know we can certainly find joy in our hardships that we experience, yeah. especially for those of us that are in a more privileged position in society mm -hmm. too. Um, you know, the Dalai Lama also connected them with them, talking to them about their history as a people, their culture as a people, and all the things that they've been through, and that they've still made a beautiful world mm -hmm. for themselves, their own community and connection. So uh, I think the history of what they have gone through and how they've still been a joyful people yeah. is really a testimony to that. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we know that they have suffered, they have experienced major hardship having yeah. to leave their families, and that's the best way of dealing with suffering is to yeah. find meaning in it. Yeah. And so for them, like the, like you said, the Dalai Lama really instilled in them a sense of pride for their mm -hmm. culture, for their people, for their history, and really a sense of purpose that they're not just giving up. Like They still have the goal of a free Tibet. Yep. And getting back there, living with their families there, going back home. And so that's really their purpose in, in their suffering, in them being able to leave um, to gain the skills and education they need to move forward and fight for their country. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so just gaining that sense of purpose and finding joy and meaning in that too. Yeah, uh, yeah just like their gratitude for their teachers, mm -hmm. the education they received for the Dalai Lama, for their opportunities, um, but yeah, acceptance too of their situation. Yeah, so they, absolutely. It, yeah, they exemplify a lot of overcoming hardships and then also the pillars of joy that yeah. we've learned about. All right, so then the last chapter of the book before the meditation practices is the departure, mm -hmm. a, a final goodbye. Um, so speaking on the state of our world today, Archbishop Tutu said, you have to be quite careless not to be sad. Mm -hmm. We look like we are hell-bent on competing to show who will be the most exquisitely cruel. Mm -hmm. I think God wants us to be joyful at every time, but right now, I think God is qu is crying quite a lot. Uh, yeah. yeah, so at the time when he said this, this conversation took place in 2015. And as I'm sure we'll all remember, um, in 2015, the main story on the news uh, was the crisis in Syria, the civil war in Syria, mm -hmm. and how many refugees um, were coming out of that country. Um, you know, we saw war ravaged Syria and thousands and thousands of refugees trying to escape the violence any way possible, even risking their lives in rafts on the sea headed to Europe. On the other side, we saw these desperate people being met with racism and hatred. Mm. Though we do not hear their stories in the news anymore, it does not mean that their struggles are over. Mm -hmm. okay? it's, the, the land has not been healed. No. Um, it's just news always moves on to what's the next big, the story. Next big story you know we see we see, see that, that on the news how yeah. it was you know non-stop coronavirus and now it's all about the the protest, the protest mm -hmm. uh against racism so you know all these stories are important but mm -hmm. unfortunately often it seems to be singularly focused and yeah. so we lose track of stories like Syria. Mm -hmm. You know, we just don't hear about what's happening there anymore, how anything was resolved, if it was. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, knowing that that's what Bishop Tutu was referring to, um, you know, now we're five years ahead of that. And would you say that his statement's t still true? Do you think God is crying often about our world today? Have, our, have things improved or become mm -hmm. worse? And what do you think may make God cry in our current world? Well, I think that God, well, I think that things have gotten better. I think that we are, uh, as, as MLK said, you know, the arc of human history is long, but it bends towards justice. Mm -hmm. So I do think that we are moving in the right direction. Yeah. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Obviously, in our society, racial injustice mm -hmm. and racial prejudice is, is a problem. Right. But I'm also seeing prejudice of just people in general. Mm -hmm. we, we just have a lot of distrust and anger towards each other. Um, and so, you know, that, so, not often, but sometimes those other prejudices too have cropped up in, in specific acts of violence that are really, really 
you know, bad, especially around conspiracy theories, which we seem to have a big problem with right now in our country. But mm -hmm. when we're looking at stuff like the racial issues, mm -hmm. stuff that's been going on for forever, and yeah. just because we may not experience it as, you know, people of, of a white ethnicity, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's not happening. And just us ignoring it doesn't make the problem go away. Yeah. And so it's, uh, you know, I think if I was to look at the situation now, I'd say that God probably is still crying mm -hmm. in the midst of everything. Yeah. But God also sees where people are starting to step up and mm -hmm. say, no, this is not right. We, we should have been past this a long time ago. Right. And so that's a, a, a blatant evidence mm -hmm. that we are moving in the right direction. Right. And as we've said before, like, you know, you might even be surprised at, at the people that you see um, speaking out against mm -hmm. racism, you know, so it's, it seems to be really so much more widespread than it had been. Yeah. You know, of, of people standing against racism. Absolutely. You know, people that you may have thought, oh, you know, well, they're not very political usually, or, oh, they usually, you know, don't say much about controversial issues, mm -hmm. or I thought they were very conservative. I yeah. didn't expect that from them. Yeah. Um, you see it from so many people standing up and in, in, you know, support of the black community um, mm -hmm. and against racism against them. Yeah. And so, yeah, so there is, it is improving, but, you know, like you said, definitely God is still crying yeah. because people are dying, you know, yeah. just because people are standing up against it doesn't mean that it's over still yeah. either it's just a people saying it needs to end mm -hmm. it's not the end but yeah. things need to end the beginning right yeah. yeah okay all right so the Dalai Lama speaks of wars he has seen within his lifetime he started with the Vietnam War more um he said starting with the Vietnam War more and more people are stepping up and opposing war he said he sees these protests as a hopeful sign. So that was a very fitting statement for what, today. Yeah, our world today, this yeah. week especially. Um, so can we find hope in the protests we are currently seeing in our nation? I think we, we talked about yeah. that one. Yeah. yeah. I, so I just say simply yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, just to elaborate, I think that it's really important to see people that are stepping up in the right ways yeah. to help address the problems mm -hmm. and not just brush them under the rug anymore right. but actually make it a part of what is important to us yeah and and I, I think it's evident that the protests are effective mm -hmm. because you know we see that people may not have been held accountable if it weren't for the outcry even three years ago yeah, yeah. but even if you know, even in the mm -hmm. cases that are, you know, in the news now, um, mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, that people would have faced the consequences who were responsible mm -hmm. for it if they, if people hadn't said anything. It'd just mm -hmm. be brushed under the rug. Um, yeah. You know, there's instances that have, of these things happening. Now, You that's know, true. that mm -hmm. unfortunately aren't mm -hmm. so public yeah. knowledge. Um, and so those ones, you know, like, it's, I, I don't think that the perpetrators would face the same consequences. No, I think you're probably right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Dalai Lama spoke about a time when he met with the Queen Mother. Because she lived through the entire 21st century, she was born in 1900 and mm. died in 2002, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Dalai Lama asked her if she thought the world was becoming better or worse over the course of her lifetime. She responded by saying without hesitation that the world was improving. When she was young, there, were, there was no concept of human rights or the right of self-determination. She said, now these things have become universal. And as we know, that's probably a generalized statement mm -hmm. where pe some people are lacking their basic human rights. Or some people don't have the opportunity of self-determination. They don't have the choice to determine the course of, the, of their life and uh, achieve the dreams that they have for yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, do you think that the world has improved or gotten worse over the course of your lifetime? And th this one we talked about as well. Um, but do you have anything else to say on that? 
Well, you know, we've talked a lot about, like, different movies and, like, TV shows that yeah. would make jo certain jokes yeah. at one time. It, you know, movies we, we were, liked. Yeah. Shows we, we liked. Say, yeah, yeah, that now we look back on them even 15 years ago. Yeah. We look back on them and we're like, what? Right. What's wrong with the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. obviously it's not appropriate. And, and mm -hmm. so, you know, you're seeing more of you know, especially in, like, media, mm -hmm. you're seeing more of an awareness yeah. of certain things. Right. Or if, you know, like, in the past, it used to be appropriate to make uh, jokes about homosexuality. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, pick on people for, like, what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, or make racist jokes or, yeah. or comments. And... Um, you know, or just, just plain putting people well, down. And look, like, you have find... so many politicians that at one time went to parties with blackface. Yeah. And even now, mm -hmm. today, right. they're getting, those pictures are resurfacing. Yeah. And they're getting in big trouble. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, in movies and, and TV and that, you don't hear that same comedy. No. It's a totally different style now. And like you mm -hmm. said... You know, movies that you really enjoyed in the past, you know, looking at it now, you're like, why did I think that was so funny? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's not, yeah. it's not funny. It's not appropriate. Yeah. And it's embarrassing that I ever liked it. Yeah. So, you know, things, certain entertainment, things like that have not aged well. Yeah. And yeah, just people are very conscious. Yeah. A lot, most people are very conscious of, you know, how am I honoring others or how am I avoiding dishonoring others of yeah. course too yeah we've definitely i think progressed as society yeah. in good ways mm -hmm. yeah all right so for me this chapter was was really hard to read to think about the fact that these two may never get a chance to see one another again due to their age and health issues difficulty of travel and the fact that the dalai lama mm -hmm. still is banned from receiving a visa to visit south africa I and mean, we talked earlier about how mm -hmm. that was a political decision from China to try to suppress the Dalai Lama and pressure South Africa to get in on that too. Um, it is heartbreaking to think that these two very close friends could be saying their final goodbye. Uh, their close bond is so strong. As they were saying goodbye, the Dalai Lama told Archbishop Tutu, I think at the time of my death, I will mm -hmm. remember you. Okay, so he's saying basically, you know, as, as I'm dying, I'll see your face. And it obviously shows a ton of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not only is this goodbye heartbreaking for them, it's heartbreaking for the world to have to eventually lose these fantastic spiritual leaders. With, the Tib with Tibet's struggle against oppression from the Chinese, the Chinese attempt to control and suppress the Tibetan Buddhist faith and the abduction and disappearance of the boy chosen as the Panchen Lama who would be the one to name the next Dalai Lama. That's mm. so a really, really complicated situation. Yeah. But with all of this struggle, the Dalai Lama admits that he may very well be the last Dalai mm -hmm. Lama. He's the 14th, and he sees it as a real possibility that there will not be a 15th. With the death of Nelson Mandela in 2013, losing Archbishop Tutu would mean losing the other major inspirational figure in the anti-apartheid movement. These two men have brought so much wisdom, inspiration, and hope to the world, to not only people who share their same faith, but also to people of many different religions and nationalities. Right? Um, they're, they're admired all throughout mm. the globe. Yeah. So, why do you think the world needs figures like the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Tutu? I think we need better examples of how we should be. Mm -hmm. People that go through hardship, that are treated poorly themselves, yeah. And how they respond, and and yeah. I think we need examples of people to look up to. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a kid, I was always told, "Oh well, you know, sports figures. You're supposed to look up to them." Well, why? Mm -hmm. You know, like that's not what their that's yeah. not what their job is. The, right. These two, their job is to mm -hmm. be the example for the rest. Of yeah, us. definitely. And you, we know that obviously there's some good sports figures yeah, too. True. Um, so you can admire them in certain ways, yeah. but yeah, definitely these are exceptional examples. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, especially the Dalai Lama, it, it, his entire life is devoted 
uh, to his practice, to developing uh, the qualities of the yeah. heart that he feels are of utmost importance. And for Bishop Tutu, of course, as Archbishop, faith hugely important to him, but his role in his nation's mm -hmm. history is, you know, like you like, can't replace it. No, like nobody else could mm -hmm. have done the job he did with the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Yeah. If it wasn't him there um, guiding them through that, then, you know, we may, it, it, it would not have been such a smooth transition. And I know it wasn't totally smooth, yeah. but it still was done very well mm -hmm. uh, for being such a hugely difficult task. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so and then the joy <laughs> practices at the end, there are dozens of different yeah. practices that you could choose from. A lot of meditations, some are not, um, but we really go into detail explaining step by step how to go through these. So yeah. it was really awesome. Um, there's so many good ones in here. We tried a lot of them. Yeah. We're only going to talk about four of them. Yeah. Um, but there's so many good ones to pick here. Yeah. So. Would you like to start with your first one? Sure, yeah. So. For me, um, I choose I, I chose one. Um, it's very simple, and it's something a lot of people do already. Uh, mm -hmm. So you might not be learning anything out of it, but maybe a good reminder, which is journaling for gratitude. Mm -hmm. And so for that one, uh, it's very simple. <laughs> you know, um, I think it's self-explanatory. But yeah, just stopping and calming your mind at the end of the day, reflecting back on your day. Uh, it's always good to reflect. So. Mm -hmm taking time, taking a moment to think back and think on the positives. So, you know, what were the things that you're, you were grateful for? Um, and then the important part here of writing them down. So it's really important to write them down so that way you can remember, you can look back over the course of the week and see, wow, it, it was a better week than I thought. Yeah. Um, or even, you know, look back uh, a year later and see, oh yeah, I remember that. That was, that was really, you know, a great day. Yeah. Um, so things like that. So, you know, for me, some things I wrote down were uh, the wildlife that we see as we go on our walks, uh, whether it's uh, bears or <laughs> deer or squirrels or chipmunks, mm -hmm. uh, just appreciation for those moments with yeah. nature. Um, or just the fact that, you know, that John's such a good packer. <laughs> See all the boxes around yeah. here and yeah. he's the one filling them up. Uh, <laughs> I get too overwhelmed with that. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy, I'm grateful for that skill. So the important thing with that is to be specific. Yeah. So don't just say, uh, I'm thankful for food, family, God, and then the next day, food, family, God. Yeah. Uh, you know, be specific. What what do you like about food? Yeah. What do you like about God? What, you know, what are you grateful for specifically? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I, I picked uh, the first one I wanted to just kind of highlight was this morning intention setting. And so basically the premise of this is that uh, once again, you sit comfortably, you close your eyes and you take uh, a number of breaths and then you ask, what is my heart's desire? And, and usually... Uh, what they say is that these should be outward desires. Uh, so they should be, they, uh, the Dalai Lama says, ask yourselves these simple testing questions. Is it time for, or is it just for me or for others, for the benefit of the few or for the many, for now or for the future? Uh, and so uh, some of their examples of things that it could be would be uh, that today I want to be less judgmental. Today I want to be more patient and loving to my children. Or today may I greet everyone with love that is in my heart. So the purpose of this is uh, to see what you can do, what you can intend for yourself to do that would be outwardly beneficial for other people as well, to improve their life, not just your own. So that's my first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then my second one that I'll talk about is a compassion meditation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for this one, it is a quite long one. Um, so it goes into great detail about how to go about doing a compassion meditation. I won't go through the whole thing here since it's very detailed, but it's also known as a loving kindness meditation. And so I tried it two ways. I tried it by like reading through the book and mm -hmm. that one was a little bit more difficult because there's so much to read through in there. There's so many steps. 
And so you have to keep opening your eyes and reading. And so it's a little uh, fragmented. And so I, um, my sister sent me a video of one of these meditations uh, on YouTube that le leads you through mm. it. And that way you can just listen to it as the calming music, but you can just listen to it as well, lead yeah. you through it. And it's really, I thought that one was more helpful, so that way I could really just focus in and, um, you know, focus on the practice. So basically with this, you're thinking of different people. Uh, it may ask you to think about a, someone you love, and mm. then it'll ask you to think about yourself in the past. Think of somebody you love when they were struggling. Think of a acquaintance or somebody that you just run into on the street mm -hmm. and you don't really, you don't like or dislike. You know, you just don't know them very well. So yeah, and so as you think on each of them, basically, you're going to be repeating the same phrase: "May you be free from suffering. May you be healthy. May you be happy. May you find peace and joy." Okay, so you're repeating that silently mm -hmm. uh, in, in your mind, in your heart, for each of the people to really develop your compassion for a whole array of people at different times yeah. in their lives. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last one that we're going to share um, is a morning meditation walk or exercise. And so basically uh, for this one, it's another simple one. You uh, basically go out and uh, you... Um, try to ba clear your your mind of any sort of outside um, distractions. So they say, you know, don't listen to music, don't don't like listen to a podcast, don't mm -hmm. talk, don't don't listen to, you know, like you know, um, have uh, any of those outside distractions. And then uh, you basically just meditate and listen to the wisdom of the spirit around you, the wisdom of the spirit in your body, and just listen to what. God has to, to teach you today. Uh, for me, when we went and I practiced this the other day, um, I just ha uh, found that the Spirit gave me a better appreciation for uh, the colors of all the grass and the trees and everything, um, the different sounds of the birds in the air, uh, and just the way that, that everything smelt. Mm -hmm. just, it just felt more fresh. real and fresh. So mm -hmm. yeah, those are just a few of the many, many, many practices that you mm -hmm. can find in this book. We would really encourage you to go, if you haven't, and pick up a copy of The Book of Joy uh, by Douglas Abrams with the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We really believe that it would change your life mm -hmm. uh, in profound and amazing ways. Right. Um, and you will find that even though it's long, it's a lot of fun. So <laughs> you won't be able to put it down very easily. Right. So. It's a joy to read yeah. and to learn about joy. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this time with us. I'm going to just pray for us and send us out for the evening. Okay. Let's pray. Gracious and holy Lord, thank you for the wisdom of Archbishop Desmond Tutu and His Holiness the Dalai Lama and for Douglas Abrams for uh, putting this together for us. Lord, we give you thanks. We ask that you bless each and every one of us to find joy more fully in our lives uh, and to share that with others. We praise you in your name. Amen. Well, thank you. Thanks, Steph, for helping guide us through this whole process, and we hope that you all have a blessed evening. Goodbye.